Dear students, today we will be learning how to make high quality figures for our scientific publications, going from something like this to something more like this. Figures that are polished and well designed can communicate complex ideas more clearly and efficiently. Now, we're not going to be able to get into all the different programs, packages, functions, helpful parameters for generating your figures like R's ggplot2 or Python's matplotlib. Nor are we going to have the time to be able to discuss any of the important choices when it comes to your data visualization design itself, like the choice of geometric primitives or visual channels for encoding quantitative data to enhance saliency and comparisons. Instead, we'll focus entirely on the aesthetic, non-scientific, non-content-oriented polishing to make figures look nice, which at first glance may seem a little superfluous because it doesn't actually change the contents of what you're visualizing. But when you've already spent years on those scientific contents, why not spend a little bit more time to make what you're presenting more visually appealing and polished to further convey your professionalism and attention to detail to help your publication stand out just that much more. Even before we dive into making our figures high quality for our scientific publications, we should already have a mock-up, which is basically our blueprint for what figure components we want to include, how we envision them to be laid out, in what order, etc. And now that we have our mock-up, we can dive into making the high quality version. Our first step will be creating vectorized versions of our figure panels. So here I've made figure panels using a built-in data set in our SDD Convolve package, and I've also applied it to perform a reference free deconvolution. I then visualize the deconvolve cell type proportions using our scatter bar package. And I want to save all these outputs as PDFs so that the graphics are vectorized and we can tinker with them later without losing resolution. I also made a heat map of the deconvolved gene expression and visualizations of specific genes in the tissue, as well as their deconvolved expression across cell types. A general related tip for making high quality figures is to stay organized and make sure that the code you use to generate your figures is reproducible so you can always generate figures and modify them as needed. Now we're ready to combine our figure panels in a vector graphics software. I will be using Adobe Illustrator because that's what I have access to through my institution. If you don't have access to Adobe Illustrator, I would definitely recommend checking out Affinity Designer, which is much more affordable and maybe even Inkscape, which is free. So I will be using an eight by 10 document to start with since I anticipate my figure will need to fit within these size limits. Importantly, I'm gonna embed all of these files so I can actually tinker with their components. Personally, I like to stay organized by keeping each figure as its own separate layer so I can more easily select them and edit them separately. And I'm gonna arrange them very approximately and again, I'm going to keep things organized as different layers. I will select these two bar plots, create a new layer, and paste them into that new layer. If I use Control shift v I can keep them in the same location. And now I'm going to use Control a to select all the figure panels. If I just try to resize them to fit my document, you can see that the aspect ratio isn't maintained. But if I hold down the shift key, now I can maintain the aspect ratios, which is particularly important for the spatial plots. So our next goal will be to make sure everything is labeled and legible. So I will just try to make all of these legends a little bit bigger. There are lots of these bounding boxes that I actually like to delete. And there are also a lot of these clipping masks. Um, I will try to group the components that I want to move together so that I can more easily grab them and scale them as a group. So I want to rotate my label so that they take up less space. If I hold down the shift key while rotating, it snaps into 45 and 90 degree angles, which is quite convenient. So I don't accidentally end up with a you know, 91 degree rotated text. Again, I'm just going to delete some of these bounding boxes, which is exported by default, but I won't really find any use for them. And for reasons we'll discuss later, I will rotate it to make the deconvolved cell types as rows and genes as columns. And I will also edit the legends a little bit to make it more visually consistent with other parts of our figure for reasons that I will get into later. 
But again, the main goal of this step is to just make our text legible. So right now it's very squished and I'm going to reset that back to 100% width so they're less squished and I'll also tinker with the font size to make sure that their G names are as big as they can be while not overlapping and still legible. And a general good rule of thumb, I think, is to not let font sizes be smaller than five or six points. We really want this figure to be as intuitive as possible for readers to be able to perceive as much informational content as possible in a single glance and not have to think about it so much. So our next step, which is probably the most time-consuming, is to use Gestalt principles, which are just general principles of human perception that describe how we perceive similar elements and recognize patterns. So I'm going to reorder my figure legend and use the Gestalt principle of similarity and proximity to have readers more quickly perceive that, you know, these deconvolved cell types have associated deconvolved gene expression. And I'll use control R to toggle on the ruler tool so that I can pull down some of these ruler guidelines that will help me snap things into place. And I'll tinker with the legend a little bit to make it more visually consistent with the other legends and to also rotate it since I generally think of numbers as going from high to low and from red to blue, hot to cold. Maybe that makes things more intuitive. And again, we want to keep everything legible, so we'll resize the text accordingly. So now for these gene expression plots, I want to use, again, visual similarity to make sure that the reader is understanding that the deconvolved cell types we should see in the first panel are the same like regions for which we have gene expression. So I'm going to try to make the geometric primitive and the gene expression plots more similar to the deconvolved cell type plots by turning these circles into squares. And I suppose I could have done it during the plotting itself and since I've saved all my code, I can definitely do that, but it turns out it's not too difficult to do it in Illustrator either. And again, I'll just do this for both genes so that they're both visually consistent, and then also resize the deconvolved gene expression plot to be roughly the same size to, again, enhance that visual similarity. In general, making figures is a very iterative process. Uh, we will likely iterate many times between applying our various Gestalt principles, stepping back, seeing how it looks, uh, adjusting the sizes of things, and making things legible, labeling things, and so forth. A good figure is a clear figure. A good figure is a readable figure. So for these deconvolved gene expressions, I want to again use visual similarity to emphasize that what we're showing here is the same deconvolved cell types that we had already seen in the first panel. So I'm going to use color similarity to just highlight that further. And for some reason here, some of the bars have these black lines. Uh, so I will just select all the strokes that are the same width and use that as a way to get rid of these things. And I will so unselect some of the other components that I want to maintain by holding down shift. In general, it's a good idea to learn your various shortcuts. Again, this doesn't change any of the information that's being encoded, but by making the colors the same, I hope that readers will be able to more quickly perceive that these uh, two panels are related to each other in this way. I generally like to minimize what I consider as distractions, like very heavy stroke weights, multiple stroke weights, multiple fonts. If there's an element of variation that you find to be 
not important to draw the viewer's attention, then I personally think it's better to get rid of it and to make things more consistent. And this can mean keeping all the legend fonts the same size, keeping the legend positions in aligned, and keeping the legend text in consistent and aligned positions. I can, I can use the color picker tool to quickly bring over the aesthetics of other elements in the figure and apply it to the component that I've selected. And I'm just going to use control shift V to paste things in the same location and then hold down shift as I move these so that they remain in the same X location. I can even use my rulers to help with alignment and positioning. And it's always good to zoom out and take a look at the whole figure, see if you like the white space distribution. If not, we can select a lot of our elements together and use shift down to move them down as a block. In this case, I feel like the heat map legend isn't a great use of our space. It leaves a little bit too much white space in the following panels. So I'm going to move the heat map figure legends to have a better use of white space. And also I make sure everything's labeled appropriately. And in general, making high quality figures is a very iterative process, and we will likely iterate many times between making our fonts more legible and minimizing distractions and enhancing similarity. So do be prepared to repeat this process many times as we iteratively progress towards our final result. After a few more minor adjustments, here is our final high quality publication ready figure. When it comes to making high quality figures for your scientific publications, as with any skill, the more you do it, the easier it will get and the faster you'll be able to do it well. So try it out for yourself.